Good morning. Welcome back to Shroud Stories. I don't know what episode it is, but I do know that it is a part two in our new video series, Tech Tips with Uncle Colty. Today, we're going to learn how to get barrel because it's firing and it has been firing. My legs are tired and I'm sore, but it's okay because you guys are here now. So we're going to definitely go back to um, Shroud Stories HQ, go over some of this footage, and I'm going to tell you guys some little tips on how to get two. So pay attention. You're gonna miss something. If you blink, you might fing miss it. Pay attention.
All right, so we had a long surf this morning. The waves were really good. There's a lot of people out, but the waves are good. We're pretty tired. And um, we're going to go over some tips on how to get tubes. First things first, pack a bunch of closeouts. First of all, the crew in the water likes to see it. They like to see commitment. They like to see you get the closeout and go for it anyway, even if you're not going to make it. It also teaches you a lot about barrel riding. Because when you're dropping into a wave, you want to be deep. You want to take off behind the peak. See, I'm like back here, and there is the lip up here. You want to be behind this section that I'm pulling into here, and then you run through the tube, right? And once it closes out, the lip will land, and it basically creates a shock wave that goes up the inside of the barrel, and that's called the foam ball, you know? And when a wave's barreling down like this, the foam ball is going to be going angled up the face of the wave, which will lift your tail and push you through the barrel. But on a closeout, it's going to come through like a shock wave and go straight up. So there's nowhere to go. And the best thing that you can do is try to get over that and continue riding in the barrel until it fizzles out. So that teaches you a lot about how to control your board going through foam ball barrels and teaches you a lot about how to make barrels that are extremely deep and you're actually in the correct spot. So first things first, pack a closeout. Pack a bunch of closeouts, actually. Let's talk about some tubes. So right here, we got a little guy. Basically what I'm looking at is there's a peak right here, right? And this is a shoulder, and this is a shoulder over here, and this is the tallest part of the wave. Now I'm a little bit behind the tallest part of the wave because you want to be underneath that once it's breaking you want to be behind it you don't want to be in front of it because then you're going to have to slow down and try to get in the barrel it's not ideal what you would like to do is drop in right at the peak of the wave just behind it a little bit so that it, when it finally folds over you can do that at first initial little pump so basically when i'm dropping into this wave i got my my back arm you can't see it but my back arm is actually pushed into the wall of the wave like this to slow me down and control my speed a little bit as I'm dropping in so you're not going to come off the bottom super fast and get too much speed and outrun the barrel. So I'm holding myself at the top of the wave where I can gain speed easily. And right when I want to get speed, I remove my back hand right here and I do this little pump. Just that little bit of pump right there brings me back up to the top of the wave again and I get to set my line and I get a run through the barrel. So you see the lips breaking right here, and that means the foam ball is probably gonna be like this. And that's like the deepest part of the barrel that you can be. That's where you wanna be. Now, when I'm in the tube, you do that little pump, and you set your line, and you look right over your middle finger of your front hand. Back hand's like this, either in the barrel, like slowing yourself down, or like this, and all of your energy is going straight over the nose of your surfboard and you look straight out the barrel right over your front fingers and that's the ideal way to get barreled let's see if we can find another example of a tube so this one you can see my back arm is planted in the in the wave right here to slow myself down and my front hand's actually on the deck of my surfboard so that sometimes what i like to do is put my front hand on the deck and you can actually steer yourself a little bit or push it down if you're trying to drop in it'll push down um, but that's a good way to get a lot of stability out of your surfboard is by having your hand on it and then your back hand's at the in the wave slowing yourself down and then you drop in here pick my hand up so that i can steer myself a little bit if you look at my feet my back foot is like on the edge of the surfboard if this is the stringer and this is the barrel my back foot is over here normally it would be right over centered over the stringer but this time it's over off to the side so that I have a lot of control over my rail and I could push down with my toes and get more drive out of my board. Whereas if it's centered over the stringer, you're not going to have as much control over your rail line. Now also, you'll notice my feet are a little bit further up than they normally would be. Right here, it's way in front of the stomp pad, probably like this much in front of the stomp pad. And my front foot is shifted up the same amount probably where it normally would be as well. And that's to get you a lot more drive and control when that foam ball hits your tail of your surfboard you're not going to get bounced off of it it's going to lift it and give you projection out of the tube so right here 
I'm still slowing myself down. Now I know that this wave is going to break in front of me, so I let off the brakes and I run through the barrel. And right here, you'll notice my, my nose is kind of doing some weird stuff, and that's because the foam ball is hitting it a little bit. So you're basically trying to control yourself through the barrel and control your surfboard as the foam ball hits it. So right here, it's the same thing. I'm looking, I got my front arm in front of me so that I can direct myself in the way that I want to be going. My feet are a little bit in front of the stomp pad. Now I was a little in front of the barrel in the first part here, but that's because I see this second section coming. So then I slow down to get ready for it and I get in the tube there for a little bit. Now, I wasn't super deep on this one. Still got a little vision out of it, so my head was in there. But that's pretty much what you're looking for. Here again, taking off. There's like the peak of the wave. I'm just a little bit deeper than it. Pop up, backhand in the tube. Try to slow myself down. I'm actually using my front hand a little bit there to slow myself down as well. Try to get inside the barrel. That's the goal, is to get deeper. You don't want to be too far out in front of it and you look like a clown. It's not ideal. So right here, you can see the foam ball is probably right underneath my surfboard. It's picking my tail up and it's giving me speed. So my back arm's still planted in the barrel, trying to slow myself down to stay right on that little foam ball. And then it carries me through the whole thing and I come out the front. So it's pretty easy once you get it dialed. You know, the best thing that you can do is just go on a bunch of closeouts. The crowd likes to see it, like I said before, and it teaches you a lot about barrel riding as well. So, kind of just all about timing, depends on what wave you're surfing, things like that. If it's big or small, whatever it may be, you know, different circumstances happen. But, that's pretty much the gist of it. If the wave's a little bit bigger, you know, sometimes you want to take off a little bit deeper because there's a lot more surface area to be surfing along. Whereas if it's ceiling high like this, you have all this room to move around on the wave. You can go way up and way down and get way more speed. Whereas when it's small like this, you don't have much room to move. So you really got to like play with it and, you know, be a little bit more intricate when things are small. But when it's bigger, it's actually a lot easier to tube ride. And you can stand up tall. It feels good. <laughs> so there's a little bit of a tech tip on tube riding. Hope you guys learned something. Um... How about you drop something in the comments? If you got any questions, I'll hit you back and uh, maybe drop a recommendation for another video series. But the next one we're going to do, we're going to learn how to do layback turns. So stay tuned for the next Tech Tips with Uncle Colty. Thanks for tuning back in. Go get some electric shades and I'll see you guys next time. Say what's up to Pancho